كورال نائب رئيس المفوضية ونتمنى له إقامة طيبة في جمهورية مصر العربية انتهيت للتو من جولة مشاورات مثمرة مع الممثل الأعلى للاتحاد الأوروبي للشؤون الخارجية والسياسة الأمنية حيث أكدنا خلالها على حرص الطاقة التاريخية والتعاون المتميز بين جامعة الدول العربية والاتحاد الأوروبي ودولهما الأعضاء سواء على الجانب العربي أو الجانب الأوروبي كما اتفقنا على ضرورة تعزيز العلاقات بين جامعة الدول العربية والاتحاد الأوروبي في كافة المجالات ذات الاهتمام المشترك كما تم تنسيق المواقف بين الجانبين إزاء عدد من القضايا ذات الاهتمام المشترك والأزمات في المنطقة وخاصة فيما يتصل بتسوية الأزمات في السودان وليبيا والحاجة إلى معالجة جذور الأسباب التي ساهمت في تفاقم أزمة الهجرة غير الشرعية وخاصة عبر البحر الأبيض المتوسط بطبيعة الأحوال احتلت القضية الفلسطينية حيزا مهما من اجتماع اليوم حيث أكدنا على ثوابت إقامة سلام عادل ودائم وشامل للصراع الفلسطيني الإسرائيلي وفق قرارات الشرعية الدولية وإقامة الدولة الفلسطينية المستقلة ومبادرة السلام العربية وعلى أساس حل الدولتين أخذا في الاعتبار أننا نؤيد وبقوة سويا تفعيل مبادرة السلام العربية ناقشنا الوضع الصعب في السودان خاصة في إطاره الإنساني هناك وأكدنا على ضرورة تناسق العمل الدولي وبالذات المبادرات المختلفة لإنقاذ الموقف سياسيا واقتصاديا وإنسانيا وأمنيا كما أعربنا عن بالغ قلقنا من تظاهر الأوضاع الأمنية في دارفور بعد انتشار خطاب الكراهية وبعد قتل والي غرب دارفور شكرا جزيلا وليتفضل وليتفضل الممثل الأعلى للحديث برؤيته. Thank you. Good morning and thank you, thank you to the Secretary General of Arab League, my dear friend Abul Gate. I am very glad to have this opportunity to meet with you today, Mr. Secretary General, to discuss the latest regional developments and the ongoing cooperation between the European Union and the League of Arab States. First, I use this opportunity to reiterate that the League of Arab States is a very important partner for the European Union and that over the years we have been cooperating closely in important issues for both of us as uh, the counter-terrorism, non-proliferation, human rights, or the Middle East peace process. For doing that, we have been having contacts, regular contacts at different levels, including ministerial meetings. The last one took place in February 2019 in, in Brussels, at that time, I was still Minister of Foreign Affairs of Spain. And since then, unfortunately, the meeting has had to be postponed. The last time it was scheduled for this week, and it has to be postponed due to the readmission of Syria on the Arab League. The mission of Syria in the lab, uh, Arab League is a sovereign decision, and we respect it. 
we respect it fully. But we also see that uh, this has done in a situation when the Syrian regime did not make any meaningful efforts towards solving the conflict. Our position with respect to the Syrian regime has not changed and will not change until they make progress in line with United Nations Security uh, Council Resolution 2254. At this moment, there is not serious accountability of the regime. This is not perceived lightly by us, and that's why uh, the EU and the Arab League postponed our ministerial meeting at the request of the European Union. But at the same time, I came here to underline that the European Union wants to deepen its engagement and dialogue with the Arab League. That's why I am here. And I want to thank you for your warm welcome. I'm glad and you to are always welcome. Thank you. I know this is my third visit to you and it has always been a pleasure. A pleasure to meet with you, dear Ahmed. Believe me, the European Union is keenly interested to keep contacts with the legal, with the Arab League, and in particular with the Arab League's Committee on Syria. We also exchange views on the next steps of the comprehensive regional peace approach for the Middle East peace process. We are cooperating to create a new momentum. We are working with the Arab League and the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and are planning to pursue this further, taking concrete steps in the coming months. It is very important for us to be successful on this endeavor. Moreover, we review the current situation in Sudan. We welcome the resumption of talks in Jeddah and the renewed 72 hour ceasefire being effective today. And certainly, uh, unavoidably, we discuss about the Russia's aggression against Ukraine. This war has grave consequences, as you said, it's very sad. First and foremost for the Ukrainian people, we see every day how Russia is bombing civilian targets. Over five million people are internally displaced in Ukraine, and four million people have escaped from the war and hosted in the European Union. But this war has also dire consequences for the rest of the world in terms of energy and food security. And this one, the latter, is affecting considerably the Arab countries. We, the European Union, we have been at the forefront of the global efforts to address food insecurity, both financially as well as through solidarity, trying to make possible the exports of over 30 million tons of Ukrainian grain and other food stuff. These are the consequences of Russia violating the basic principles of the United Nations Charter by launching an illegal and unjustified war against the neighbor. And when it comes to the path toward peace, it needs to be clear that we have an aggressor and a victim of the aggression, Ukraine. We stand behind President Zelensky's 10 point peace which is based on basic principles of the United Nations Charter and back on the United Nations General Assembly resolutions, which have been supported by an overwhelming majority of states. Dear Secretary General, on that and other issues of a mutual concern, we will continue developing our cooperation. I want to raise the level of cooperation between the European Union and the League of Arab States further. And this is why I'm here, to enjoy your friendship and your welcome, trying to overcome any difficulty that could prevent us from cooperating more and better for the mutual benefits of our people.
Thank you very much. Thank you very much.